I wanted this trip to be all about new experiences. Going on an East Coast trip is something I've always wanted to do. Now let's see where it takes us. That is incredible. Look at that one. Yeah. Yeah. That was what we came out here for, boy. Gone. My wallet's gone. The series is going great. Yesterday was an amazing day. We killed it in Toronto. We Maybe caught some fish. Somebody must have stolen my wallet. It's gone. I don't know what I'm going to do. But we caught some amazing fish yesterday, and today we're doing a little bit of catch and cook. We fished Lake Ontario yesterday, which is a huge body of water. It's a great lake. Now we're going to like a smaller body of water, but it's still freaking huge. Lake Simcoe. If you guys didn't know this, there's some huge smallmouth bass in Lake Simcoe, as well as some tasty, tasty fish, which that's actually what we're going after. We're going to catch the tasty fish first, kind of do a shore lunch, and then go after some big smallmouth in the afternoon. And so. rock bass. Rock bass. Rock, rock bass, on, too. Man. Rock bass, rock too. Bass so that's the there. plan. I've never seen bigger rock bass. I might kill him either. if he gets, just keeps interrupting <laughs> me during this whole series, you know? Have you ever fried those? What? Rock bass. Are you okay? They're good, man. But they sizzle more. And they're going to burn your chest. And then we're going to have to call you sizzle chest. <laughs> Yesterday we fished Toronto, today we're fishing Lake Simcoe. This is known for absolutely giant bass. I've caught my biggest bass ever out of here last fall. Um, but today we're not going after bass like I said, we're going after perch. The only issue is it is a holiday weekend, it's super windy, and there's a lot of boats out here. So it's the conditions aren't prime, we're still going to try and go after these fish. We've got some prototype lures we're going to try, we got the boat in the water, are you ready? What is a little different than last time we were here? Hey, yeah, hey. I was just talking about the weather. Woo! So it's nice. nice, it's so nice out. And uh, yeah, we just gotta get away from the wind. That's the biggest issue. You guys know wind causes bad audio and it's hard to fish in. But uh, I think we got this. What do you think? Way harder, I don't know. And nothing can be harder you than yesterday. You love Uncle Bobby? I heard Uncle Bobby. Uncle Bobby, I love you. Thank you very much for everything you do for me. The old dinner bell, an ice fishing spoon. But well, we're gonna use it for perch. Let's see what happens. Wow, this thing sinks so slow. <laughs> yeah, it's a perch. Oh! A little bit small, but it's a perch. We'll start. Put him in, we could go starving, AP. All right, so we're out here right now. Um, we're fishing a reef. The wind's blowing this way on the reef, so we're gonna kinda try and face off this way, um, cause these fish should just be right off it. And I'm throwing a little dinner bell spoon. Taro's throwing a seven millimeter with a little prototype plastic on there. And we're just using, you know, ice fishing gear for these perch. It's pretty hard to catch them sometimes in the summer. They kinda move around and move around reefs, is what Taro said, but he said he's caught some big ones here. So that's kinda what we're doing. We wanna catch four to seven fish. We just wanna kinda have a little afternoon snack out here. Carol's missing a fish every two seconds right now. Oh, on, on. He lost. Small. Fish on. Yeah. On the spoon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that. So that right there is the beautiful perch we're after. That's a really nice one, honestly. Oh, and I was just dragging the spoon. I'm um, just out there kind of bouncing it and all of a sudden just boom. And the key is, you know, with that, the, the tungsten that Taro's using, you kind of catch some smaller fish. With the spoon, it kind of weeds out the smaller fish. And right there is a beautiful perch, yummy, yummy tummy in my belly. Okay. So I'm gonna throw this perch right in here. Yeah. Boom, we got one. Taro's hooked up again. Oh, no, no, no. it was no. a giant, bro. Oh Damn. my goodness! <laughs> you rushed him! The hardest part about this fishing is just feeling the jig and the spoon on the bottom. You know, the dinner bell is a very light spoon, so it's just you gotta let it flutter, let it get down there, and then boom, that one hit it. He's using the tungsten jig, which is probably a little bit easier to feel because it's a big heavy jig. Um, but the little fish can eat that as well because it's so compact. The spoon's bigger, 
but it weighs less, if that makes any sense. It's a big fish bait. It's a big fish bait, it's just hard to feel it down there. So we're after about five of those jumbo perch. A jumbo perch is probably anything over 12 inches, and in the summer, it's actually pretty tough to catch big perch um, out here. So you gotta kind of weed through some small fish, and that's what we're doing. So. Perch, yum yummy in my tummy. This is a big perch, but it's a giant. Woo! <laughs> I got your spoon. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's why it felt so heavy. Sorry, man. I got your line in the fish. You can't feel where your spoon's at. It's not that big, but it fought like crazy. It's chunky. What do you think he is? Almost 13. We've been out here for what? 20 minutes? Not even. Not even. Not even. Just wham, wham, wham. So opposite of yesterday's kind of gig, man. We grinded and today just like, okay, where we left off is where it's just it's so good. So, oh, good. Perch, perch, perch. I love my panfish. Yeah. Oh, it's a giant! I don't know. I don't think so. Never know though. It's a good one. They're just eating this bait. Should we keep that one? That's like a 10 incher. No. no. Are we getting cocky or no? We're a bit cocky. Remember yesterday? Oh, I don't know. Should we keep it? I don't know. No. Okay. We'll let it go. Yep. I already threw that. They're just eating this bait. It's so good. It's a little tungsten. It knifes right down. There's no little prototype frost bait bite. It's so easy to drag and feel in this wind. It's just, oh, delightful. Fish on. Got it. Got it. No, it's little. Little guy. It's better for me to be vertical on these fish because I can like actually feel it. Like that one, I was just slowly working my rod tip. These fish are all the way in 30 feet of water right now. So they're coming up and just, the spoon's about two feet from the bottom. And golden perch are some of my favorite fish to eat. They just taste so damn good. Oh, right. It's a giant. So what do you do you usually release fish over like 14 inches or what is what do you release? Yeah, you know what? That might be a bit too big. Yeah. So if you catch one about 14, you want to release it, but that one. that 12 that 12 to 14 inch range is perfect to eat. Taro's hooked up. Yeah, that's a perfect eater there. What do you think that one is, AP? 11, 12, 11. This is a perfect eater. Like, those are the ones I kind of like to keep. It's worth filleting, and it's not like a super tank that you want to release. Perfect eater. I think I got a good one. Oh yeah, it's a good one, AP. I got a good one. Get the net. Could be that big. They're dropping off at the surface. It's a big one. I ain't playing. Oh, we're eating! <laughs> oh, yes. Look at that That's one. That's a nice one. That's 13 maybe, you know what I mean? We're getting better. That is the biggest one of the day. Taro just caught it on a little seven millimeter jig right there. Look at that thing. Crazy. Yes, yeah, so we got- Wait, mate, We wait. got three now? Yep. Three good ones. We've got three good ones. Our goal was to get four at least, four to six good fish. So we're gonna keep fishing. Um, did that fish come a little deeper? Oh uh, no, I just no, moving around a just little moving bit. Around. Just around. Yeah, we were just moving around. Taro is beating my butt with that jig. Uh, that's the only jig I brought. We only have one jig in the boat. So don't don't lose it. No. Please don't lose it. some perch for dinner dad <laughs> I was trying to only catch big fish with my spoon and uh, that that theory just went right out the door we just caught a little baby but now we're kind of just drifting these spoons out the back he's still throwing the seven millimeter we caught those those three really nice fish right away and you know we set a cap we wanted four to six when you set a cap it's always the hardest to get that final and fourth fish that we I want I think I've dropped about Honestly, You've lost some big fish. Yeah. <laughs> Terrell's also lost some good ones. It turns out that we have no clue how to count. We actually had four jumbo perch in the live boat. We thought we had three. We actually had four. So we just spent the last 20 minutes trying to catch a fourth fish when we had it in the live boat. We are so thankful though that we got out here and caught those fish right away because the bite just completely turned off out of nowhere. Like, we literally smashed them. We smashed them in the first 20 minutes and then 
boom, done, finito bite. So what we're gonna do now is there's a little beach right by the ramp where we launch. We're gonna go there and do a little cooking for you guys. I brought my shore lunch box and I'm gonna go over a few things. I got a new addition in the shore lunch box as well as a great recipe that we're about to eat. Oh wow, that is easy. Wow, look at that. Ready, three, two, one, boom, butane's in. How's it going, guys? Welcome to shore. We did an awesome catch and cook out there, and we were gonna keep fishing out there, but the wind, we kind of got blown off the spot as well as, it doesn't really matter. Cooking is one of my favorite things to do, and I was sold. This morning, I have something called a jet boil. This is like a $100, did I just get this stuck in there? Oh. It's like a hundred dollar contraption. It's got a lighter there. It goes on the bottom of this. It's 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 pretty sweet, okay? But it's a hundred dollars. And there was another piece I had to buy to use it to use the pan. So I was like, hundred dollars for another piece? Like that thing is just so expensive. So we went to the store and we bought this little propane grill. This was thirty-two dollars Canadian. So that's like twenty-five dollars US. So we decided, I don't know, this could be cool. Look at this. It fits in this little case. Um, it's made by Martin. I have no clue anything about grills or anything about this stuff, but I do love to do some camping, and this series is about to get crazy with the camping. So Taro's grabbing the perch right now, and uh, we're going to test out this little lighter. We've kind of pulled off into the back area because of the wind, and uh, we're in this little marina. We're going to see what happens. Let's see. How does this start? Is that it? It's easy as that? Hopefully it doesn't explode in this phase. This thing is weird. We've got four fish here. The reason why we have four is because we don't need to waste them. These fish are freaking big, plenty big, and they're beautiful jumbo perch. And all I'm gonna do is fillet them just like you would any normal fish. I'm gonna fillet in a second because this guy is heap. I don't know, maybe it's the border, maybe so, it's the knife until I try it. This I got it. out of one side. The brutal. Brutal, Are I missed, I missed this area. I miss that area, so. Like a butchery. Just butchery. I've honestly never filleted perch that much. Like, I, we don't have big perch in Chicago by me. I mean, if you fish like Michigan, but I'm used to bluegills, crappies, and walleyes. But let's see it. Here we go. I can tell this guy can't fillet any more crap. Comment below and you be the judge on who can fillet better, me or Peric. I look like I'd be worse, but you know what? I think I'm better. Boom. One. Okay. My next cut's like this, two. Just all behind the two pins. This fin and this fin and a diagonal. Boom, done. Then I come from here. Don't, I go about an inch down on this side of the fin, an inch down. Boom, 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 boom. Right about here, there's no more rib cage. I'll go right through. Boom. Right to the tail. I don't cut off to the tail, I'll show you why. Then what I do, it makes it easier when you fillet the other side, it makes it cleaner if you do the other side now. So you have an edge, it's weird. If you cut off one fillet and then you have to work with it, it's all floppy. This keeps the body together so you, you have more feel. It keeps it together so it's easier to fillet each side. Then I go down, open it up, and I just run around the rib cage. It's a one shot done kind of deal. Instead of cutting through, you could cut through and take it out later. I just like getting it done in one shot, one piece method. Boom. Finish off here, boom. I keep it together here so I have an edge. Get my knife on an angle. And I kind of just pull it. It's kind of hard. We'll give Peric the benefit of the doubt here. The board is very slippery and not sticking. Oh yeah, I can see why. Not perfect, but definitely I can already see it's gonna be better. How's it going, Hackshot? It's hard. I'll give you the minute, but mine is a little bit better. A little bit better, I think. I think mine's cleaner. <laughs> what is this dirt? <laughs> Wow, so slow. <laughs> Butchery at its finest. Oh my god. What a beautiful fish died for no reason. <laughs> There's nothing left. You got a nice chunk there.
So a lot of people on YouTube have been making the Frank's Red Hot. You know, it's such a typical recipe lately, and it's so good. You know, no, I'm not, I'm not dissing Flair right now or anything. But today we're gonna do kind of a classic, what I call a classic two-toned, beer-battered perch. And what I'm doing here is I'm just cracking some beautiful fresh eggs from the local gas station here and putting them into my bag. My bag here. The worst thing you can do is have shells. But no, I'm doing a two, a two stepper here. So first step is egg. Um, actually, that's not the first step, but the first step to do it is crack your eggs and throw them into a bag, and then you're gonna scramble it up. I love Ziploc bags when I'm cooking on the shore because it's just so easy and so clean. Okay, there we go. Since we have a dozen eggs, we are gonna use all dozen because, really? I mean, why not? <laughs> That's enough there, bro. I'm hungry. You ever, you ever scrambled eggs like that? Easiest way. Scrambled eggs, look at that. Did you get that? That was good. That was real good. Beer batter. So this is your one-two punch. We're gonna take a filet right here. This is a beautiful perch filet. We're gonna dip it in the beer batter there. Just get it coated, nothing first. Just first step is that. Then you're gonna take it, go back into the air, go into the egg, dip it in the egg, bring it out, and then you're gonna go back into this. So kind of like a double one-two punch there. That way you get a nice fluffy batter on there. Then once that's on there, you're gonna put it on your plate there. And we're just going to do that to every single one of these fillets. Beer batter, egg, beer batter again. Master P, Master P, why don't we try vape oil? That's original. No one was cooking in vape oil. Why don't we try it? You know, vape's a big thing here in Canada. Don't vape, kids. Vaping is not good for you. Yeah, but what do you don't vape. vape. If you cook it, it no vaping. This channel is a no cooking and vaping oil channel. No, but Did you know vaping. that? We're not We're just <laughs> oil cooked. So what we, oh wow, that oil's already hot. Look at that. You guys ready for this? Oil's heating up right now. We're just testing with a little bit of water on there. You kind of want it to sizzle. That way you can get a good crisp on those fish. And uh, we double, double breaded the fish. Just a little bit of egg, a little bit something different. This is more of a classic, I would call it. And what's going on? We don't have a fork to flip it. So we could use chopsticks now. <sighs> It's not that dirty, it's just wood off the ground where there's goose everywhere. But what is goose poop? It's just heat, hay, chewed up. Why not? You're just a dirty human. He's just <laughs> dirty. So we're gonna let him do his chopstick method. I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use my knife here and keep well, everything sanitary. Is a chopstick method or not? Yeah, we will. But once you cook it off, you can have spider goulash. It'll be fine. That was not hot enough. Not hot enough, man. Pretty weird for the Michael Jordan of the fish game that we live in like this. Unreal. There's Popeye our first fish. fish. You want to try it? You want to be first? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Here goes sticks. Mama, it's a delicious. It's unbelievable. Is it actually good? So good. <laughs> Hot. Oh. Yeah. That just came off the fryer. How can you even eat that? <laughs> That's like 150 degrees. <laughs> Look at how white that is. Mm. Let me see that. Let me see the inside of that. Holy cow! Beautiful. So the, ob the thing that I added to my shore lunch thing, which mm. I didn't have before, was a little Martin burner. Usually I'm always cooking shore lunch with like a fire or something. And this, this burner was $30 Canadian and it's awesome. Like this is just so simple. I, would have lied. I love just these little tinfoil things. They're like a dollar, not even, like 20 cents at a grocery store. You throw your fish in there when you're done. And here we go. This is... Uh, First test of Simcoe Lake Perch. Simcoe Lake Perch, Lake Simcoe, bro. Speak mm. English. And this is Canadian. Oh my gosh. Deep fried American. I love deep fried. Yeah. Every, every it's so classic. This is so classic. Like I could taste the classic fish fry on the shores of Canada, like right here. But instead, we're in a busy marina and we're frying fish up like a bunch of hobos. But it's still awesome, it's still funny. Yeah. Mm. 
I go through and enjoy it with my buddy, Carol. And my struggle. So amazed at how nice this was. Like, this burner, boom, folds up in here. Into my shore lunchbox. Pans cleaned up. Into there. Some extra butane. And we're picking up all our garbage. Make sure you pick up all your garbage. You guys are going to do something like this where you cook some fish on the shoreline. Just clean yourself up. Clean your stuff up. Clean yourself up. Clean your stuff up. And get ready. Especially when you're cooking on private property and sleeping there in a tent. <laughs> like this guy does. Where he says, don't cook here. There's a sign that says, don't cook here. What does he do? He cooks here. Unreal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of the second part of the Canadian trip so far. First thing we did was fish Toronto. Second thing we did was fish Simcoe for some big perch. I'm not going to tell you guys what's next, but it's going to be epic. We've got some stuff to do tonight, and that's all I'm going to say. We will catch you guys tomorrow. I heard Uncle Bobby! I got to get away from this guy. <laughs>